So, welcome to my ransomware talk. Um, it's, I just tried to, to uh, translate most of the slides in English because there was in German until five minutes ago. So, um, yeah, the most parts are now in English, so you should understand the most things. Uh, yeah, it's about ransomware, uh, data encryption made easy. Um, so, the word ransomware is like the first like ransom for blackmailing people. And the other part is like the where, like software and hardware, the, the, the word. Um, well, let's start with the history of ransomware. So it, it started really early. It started earlier than I was born. So it started 1989. There was the 8 trillion disk. It was, um, was, was given to people via in, infected floppy disks, via uh, uh, AIDS, uh, AIDS conference. Uh, and the developer of the ransomware was caught and put into jail. So that was the first like offline distribution of ransomware. Um, the first uh, internet attack with a ransomware uh, malware was uh, the Troy PGP coder and they wanted a couple of hundred dollars of ransom of the people. Um, so today about ransomware, uh, there are a lot of infections. Um, you see it all the time in the news. You saw it last last couple of days. The NotPetya ransomware, and also some weeks ago the WannaCry thing. So it's quite um, quite common in these days. So in meantime, like big companies affected, so they make a lot of loss if they get infected, like over a hundred of million dollars loss in in money when all the systems are not working and they can't produce stuff. What happened now at the NotPetya um, phase for a lot of companies? So one fourth of the people like paying the ransom to the ransomware um, criminals. So I mean the the black number is like higher. So the real number is quite higher. What, how much people are paying the ransom? There are. Uh, a lot of different versions of ransomware. I mean, I put some there. Um, it's maybe not so good to see, but there are the red ones and the green ones. Uh, normally, the, the green one have um, some decryptors, so you can decrypt the files which got encrypted by ransomware. And for the red ones, uh, actually, there are no uh, decryptors. So if you get uh, these red ones on your system, it, probably your files are gone if you don't pay the ransom. Uh, so that's really a small, uh, um, small collection. There are a, lot, a lot of more. There are over 400 ransomware types, and also some like quite, quite uh, the same, but still another way uh, for, of, of ransomware and what file types they are encrypting. So it's just a really small amount, which I showed you here. So ransomware in reality. So it's a, it's a um, German article on Heiser. But it's then that it was um, it was last year in February. It was a hospital in US. They got infected and they paid 40 bitcoins to the ransomware criminals, and that was around worth 15,000 euro. So they paid 15,000 euro to get the data encrypt uh, decrypted. So it's quite a high amount that, that companies are willing to pay to get their data encrypted. And I think they would better invest the money in some backup system, but they didn't. Uh, an, another very interesting thing is popcorn time. Um, this is quite interesting because um, you get infected, then you can choose, you can pay the ransom, or you infect two other friends of you, and if they pay, you get your data back for free. So it's like a snowball system, like you give the other two friends the ransom, they pay and you get it, uh, your, your data back. So it's quite nifty, so they, so they have really interesting ways to distribute the ransomware. Another one uh, is GoldenEye, it's, our, it's some kind of Petya ransomware. Um, they are sending uh, individual um, job, uh, for, for job application. They are sending individual documents to the to the offices of the companies. So they really the, the people in office think it's a real uh, legit uh, application for the job. So they open it and they got infected. So there was before another one, which is, was 
quite generic one, a quite quite generic application for a job with no real. Uh, they didn't um, showed up for the real descriptions or just a generic one, but this is really sophisticated and really uh, are really on the job description personalized applications. So it's so it's somehow also a social engineering component in there that they get the companies to get infected because the people think it's alleged um, alleged application for a job. Uh, so how getting infected? So that's. Uh, question. Um, there are, that's example email with link to ransomware. So that's the part with the generic email. So that was the generic email for application. And uh, the guy wrote, yeah, my, my whole application, uh, I put in my Dropbox, just download it from there because it's too big for the email. So people just click the, the Dropbox link, download the file and just open it and then they are infected. Um, but normally the files are have to be a, a, some specific type of, of uh, program or of file. So one one, par one possibility to to get uh, infected is Office Word macros or Excel. So they make they are quite good in it to 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 let people um, enable the macro. Uh, so that's one way, like. They're telling the, the data encoding is incorrect of the file and they should uh, enable the macro of the office uh, document. So it's quite well done. So if you don't know, or don't have the knowledge, you will think it's legit and they will, you will, you will um, activate the macro. Um, but there is another better one, uh, that's this one. So everything is blurred and then it's standing there use security reasons and for your safety kindly click option enable content at the above to view a proper document. So people will think okay it's for security reasons blurred so let's activate the macro to unblur it and they also get infected. So it's, it's really it's really really well done so people will think it's legit uh, macro and they will activate it and get infected. So also one attack vector is PDF so often through security holes in the PDF format or often unknown zero day holes uh, are exploited. Uh, often it's in the, in the program, like in Adobe Acrobat Reader, there are some, some bugs in the, in, the, in the code of the program and therefore they craft some malicious PDFs and when you open it with the Adobe Acrobat Reader, they can like run their own code and exploit you and run ransomware or other stuff. Um, yeah, the best one is the Adobe Flash Player. It's the all-time all uh, malware uh, pot where you get your malware for, from. So it's like, it's often used not only for ransomware, for every other malware it's used because there are a lot of bugs in there. Like they fix like every week some bug and often very critical bugs. And there was a quite some zero days for the Adobe Flash Player protocol. Um, so it's uh, quite a common way to get infected with malware. Also one um, thing is Java drive-by attack. So if normally in actual system we have Java disabled, but in other systems it could be enabled. So, and if you go on some malicious website it's, um, and you have Java enabled in a browser, it will download in the background uh, some malware and, and run it and you will not, uh, not see anything. So it will just be do it in the background and you will get infected and you will not uh, see that it happens. So it's really quite uh, dangerous. So what happens exactly when I get a ransomware on my, on my computer? So there are different methods uh, um, what will happen uh, and, and or how they encrypt the data. So also it depends on the ransomware. There are different data extensions that are encrypted. So the ransomware maybe is a program that just encrypts text files and, and JPEGs and videos and every other thing is not encrypted. Or there are ransomware which encrypt everything except the Windows folder. So it depends on the ransomware what it will encrypt. Um, so the blackmailing message is there with, yeah, come on, give me some bitcoins. Uh, so optional is a countdown that uh, force people that they pay the ransom because if the countdown is over the data is like get deleted or whatever. Um, so deletion of data is also one thing that can happen. It also happens often with combination of the countdown that the countdown says in, in one day there will be data be deleted. Uh, yeah, possible is also that uh, they blackmail the people and say they will like um, 
put the data online of your system. They could like download your data from the system and uh, just put it somewhere that everyone can download it. So they can blackmail you with your own data. That's a possibility. Uh, so how it normally is encrypted. Uh, so the files are normally encrypted symmetric with AES encryption. And normally the AES key is then encrypted with public private key. Um, so it's the, it is encrypted with the public key, the AES key. And normally on the server is the, the private key for the public key, which you normally get if you pay the ransom. Not every time, but normally they, they store the key on the server. Uh, that's like the common way how to encrypt the files of ransomware. But there are also under other ways of encryption possible. Uh, one way it Petya, the, the Petya GoldenEye thing do it is, um, is encrypting the, the file system table of the of your Windows partition and, the ma and change the master boot recorder. So your system doesn't know where, you, where the files are on the, on the hard disk, so it will, will not boot and you have no clue where the files are on the system. And there is a way to get the files out. You can use like some photo recovery tools and it will check the, check the magic numbers of the files and therefore you can like get out the, the files. But there is no structure where the file is located on the hard disk. But at this, at this uh, way you still can recover the files of some recovery tool like Binwalk or photo recovery tool to get your files back. Then, yeah, how to protect? So the first thing is like, yeah, do backups. Um, but, uh, so you, uh, you say don't use backups. Tell me more about this genius plan for data loss. And there are some speciali specialists like this that they don't need backups and then they cry because the data is away. Mm, there are various ways of backups. There are, you can backup single files. You can make a whole image of the, of the hard disk. You can use incremental backups, which don't need a lot of space. Um, you can make remote backups on a file server, uh, differential backups. Uh, what you should watch out is uh, that you have some, some place where you put your software licenses. <coughs> you should check out the user profiles of the programs. Uh, like where is your Firefox uh, profile or um, folder, where is your Thunderbird profile or folder or your Outlook folder. So in Windows they're often in some hidden hidden directories. So you should watch out for this if you like backup single files that you want to backup this. Also passwords you should somehow backup. Uh, I recommend to use some password manager like uh, KeePass for example and have there some encrypted database with your passwords. So that's one important thing. So copies of the files on the local computer are not safe. And they're not safe on other partition of the same hard disk. Uh, so please use some external hard drive or on a remote file server to back up your files because else they are away. So it can happen that uh, your computer gets stolen. It can happen that your computer gets flooded by water. It can happen the computer just break. So there are different ways that your hard disk can be destroyed or be away. So it's it's good to have some backup on external media which you can remove and put somewhere away and close in the safe or whatever on another location. So <coughs> not, not, it's not good to have it in the in the same PC on other on a hard disk. Yeah. So backup all the things. And there is one crucial thing you need to know, you need to t test your backups. Um, yeah, in the worst case, restoring the backup doesn't work. And so testing is essential. I mean, there are some, some quite good examples about uh, testing backups. So you heard maybe of GitLab. They lost like five hours or six hours of data. <coughs> they tried to restore it. They have like five different methods and every one of them failed in the end and they, they lost six hours of that uh, and it was quite a, a big amount of that that got lost and they couldn't recover. S and that can, f can happen really fast. So <coughs> you should test your backup at least once that you can verify that it's working. Because if you try to restore it and it not works, well, your, <laughs> your data is wiped away and then even the backup don't help you. Uh, I have here for for Windows uh, some uh, recommendations. <coughs> Windows all everyone is like 
like free tools. Not everything is open source, so the, the Areca backup is open source, it's in Java and it's also running on Linux. And it has quite a big um, feature set, so you can make incremental backups, you can have passwords on the backup, <coughs> and so on. I mean, also the, the Windows internal um, backup tool is quite okay for Windows. Um, so also, you should use an uh, actual antivirus. I mean, it's uh, antivirus is not uh, the holy grail against anti uh, against malware, but you should have one. Uh, for Windows, I recommend the internal one, the the security essentials of Microsoft. I mean, the rest of the stuff is <coughs> normally costs something, and uh, it just use more resources than you really need. Uh, also very important is that you have an actual operating system, browser and programs, so make your security updates. Uh, you saw it that the WannaCry uh, thing that threw a hole that Microsoft patched two months ago, they attacked the whole computer. So if every system did their job and patched the system, it wouldn't happen to some companies. But you saw that it happened and like then the not, not patch case was like some weeks later with the same exploit on one side and still some system get, get infected so you saw people don't learn it sometimes. <coughs> so it's, it's really essential to have some really up-to-date software. <coughs> First of all it's for, for your security and, and other thing is maybe also get new features that get by, by patched. Uh, one important thing is for Windows to turn on the Windows, uh, the, the file extension. It's normally turned off on in Windows. Uh, so just like the way how to turn it on. Uh, I don't know why they do it on default to turn it off. It, it's bad because you can like rename some file in uh, um, legit email.pdf.exe and so it will be executable and people don't, will not see it on the, on the ending. They will just see the PDF ending and they think it's legit and open it and then, well, fuck. Uh, yeah, deactivate your Adobe Flash. Uh, the better solution is to deinstall it completely, uninstall. Uh, the newer browsers are already starting to completely remove it from their browser ex ex extension set. So the newer Chrome editions, I think they will completely remove the, the support for Adobe Flash, but it's really good because there are better alternatives like HTML5 for the for the tools. I mean, the big problem is there's still this, this, this fancy gaming website with all the flashed games they are out. So that will be a problem. But if you really want to play these fancy flash games, I recommend to get the virtual machine and play the virtual machine. Uh, also, one big thing is that you should mistrust email and attachments of emails because that's like one of the really common ways to get infected by malware. Um, and it could be that your, a friend of mine sends you, sends you an email with some malicious attachment and your friend didn't even know that he sent this, your, the email to you. So if you sometimes get some email with suspicious attachment from a friend of you, probably you should ask him if he wanted to send you an email and if not, maybe he will then uh, see that he got infected. So sometimes people don't even know that they're infected with, with malware. So sometimes uh, sometimes it's okay to ask the, your, the people that send you emails if they really wanted to send you an email like this. <coughs> so this was on German, but it says uh, you, you shouldn't use ad administration rights. Uh, you should like you work with standard local user rights. Uh, but you have to know it don't protect you from ransomware. Uh, the data will still be encrypted of your own home directory. <coughs> and it's like it's like some fake uh, security. So people think when they when they work with local user rights that they're like secure, but it's not not the way. They still the home directory gets infected and the user can't get infected. So it just helps that the not the whole system gets infected and only the the home directory of the user. But still, it's it's not as real security against ransomware. Your data will still get encrypted. Uh, also. No plugging in of unknown flash drives, also one way to get infected uh, with malware or ransomware. Um, so the thing is also 
that people use for, for social engineering. They go to companies and put their some USB flash drives in front of the company and they hope that someone will put it in, in, their, in the company computer. And so they have a backdoor in the, in the company. So sometimes flash are really, really bad. And there are these this fancy flash drives which destroy your laptop. Maybe you heard of it, USB killer, really cool tool. Destroy, makes, makes magic smoke on your computer. So, it's, you <coughs> so you can get infected or you can destroy your computer. So you can choose. Um, so if you have some files, uh, you can check suspicious files online. There is a virus virustotal.com. Uh, they can check the file if there are some, they have like 40 uh, antivirus softwares which are checking the file and you get the result online um, and don't upload private data because you don't know what they will still do with that or where it is backed up, what, whatever. So just upload some suspicious files online. Uh, one thing is use Linux. <coughs> so. There are quite, some use, quite a lot of user-friendly systems. I, I, I mentioned here two of them, like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, but are quite a lot of other also there. And it's a quite a good tool against malware. In, in. Um, yeah, that's on German, but it says uh, brain exe use you have. So uh, also use your brain when you get emails or attachments or open files. Probably you think, hmm, should I, should I um, open the file? There, there is a fun story from my girlfriend. The father is like, um, I was in IT and he told me a story in the office. There were two people sitting in the computer and the one said, oh, there's that file, it's, it's suspicious. I would not open it. And the other person said, well, it's okay, it's okay, you can open it. And I was like, ah, I don't know. And they're like, yeah, you can do it. Then he opened the file and it got infected and the whole computer was encrypted. So also people, Tell the people, yeah, do it, and then they did it, and then they got infected. So the one, the one person used the brain, the other one not, and in the end, the whole computer got infected by malware. So did I tell you I do backups? Now I tell you again. So make backups. It's really important, not only for malware, also for other stuff. You, you will need it later, sometime for sure. Uh, that's also in German, but uh, that's like a small how to, what to do when you're infected. So the first one is really to turn off the computer, like hard turn off, like put, put away the electricity and really on the turn off um, thing. Uh, you, you should boot the live system and try to, um, re um, to rescue some data if it's still not encrypted. Um, you can, there are ways to, um, Identify the ransomware type okay, with the extension of the of the files, as example. Uh, therefore, and then you can like rescue the data and maybe also decrypt the data with some encrypt uh, decryption soft tool if it's available. Uh, then I say if you got infected by malware in general, you should uh, put in a completely new operating system. So delete everything and install it again because you don't know if you like clean it up with, with some antivirus if it's still really clean because there could be something in the in the back, some still some something there in some hidden folders, whatever. And yeah, uh, restore your backup if you have one. <coughs> uh, you, don't have, you don't have a backup, but it's bad. So really, as I said, it's backup is really important. Um, yeah, I, I brought to you my, my demo setup. So I have a virtual machine with some ransomware samples on it. So I will show you a little bit of it.
So that's my, my Windows machine. Um, I have here some sample data, I have some wallpaper package here, <coughs> I have um, some office um, things and I have some music pack here as, as sample data. And I have here some ransomware. Uh, I have this one. This is not working. I don't know why. But that's one of the golden pet of the pet golden eye ransomware. So when you open it, uh, it's it's like that's the local uh, job administration in Germany. And so they 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 giving you jobs in Germany. So if you have no job, you go to them and they show you where where you have to send uh, application all the stuff. And they give you the the money the money if you if you are unemployed and yeah the, that's like excel file and they, they tell you yeah that's like some uh, competence profile of the of the application person and you should activate macro to see the competence profile so really the the office people think it's a legit file and they activate the macro and then it's not working and in this case i don't know it's not working if i if i activate the macros uh yeah, yeah. oops if you activate the macros, this this thing is somehow broken. I don't know why. You will see it. there was some some error message. So let's activate. Yeah. So so there is there is a Microsoft Visual Basic uh, runtime error 429. We can try to debug it. <laughs> So you see it's really obfuscated code which is running there and I have no clue what it should do but it normally should, it should load the, the Petya ransomware and encrypt it. So if you like to debug it I can give you the files afterwards, you can have fun. Um, so this one is not working but I have other one. So there are some quite interesting ransomware samples here also. Uh, maybe you, you heard of, about ransomware. So ransomware is a ransomware uh, which uh, don't want money of you. It wants of you that you download a game and you need, need to play this game and reach 0 0.2 million or 2 million points in the game and then you, you will get encrypted data. So I start it now and then you will see that it will tell I want that you play this game. So. Yeah, it's, it's running now, it's encrypting my files, let's check. It's really fast, everything's already encrypted, you see. So the whole, that's still on the way, that's already encrypted. So it has the ending ransomware file. So it, it literally encrypts everything. more or less. So let's see. Uh, so it needs a little bit of time but then um, it will pop up a message. Yeah, so that's that's quite a quite interesting uh, user interface of the ransomware. Uh, so it, it's my, it's so my, your system has been encrypted by ransomware. Um, I can't make it bigger. Um, yeah, well, you have to pay to to play the game uh, Lunatic, and you have to reach over 0 0.2 billion points, and then your uh, files will be recovered. So in the end, you have to download the game and uh, play it and get 0 0.2 billion, and then it will be, will be decrypt the files by the ransomware. There is another cool ransomware, which is not the, it's a real ransomware, but in the end it encrypts your files, shows your YouTube video about ransomware, and then it decrypts the files again. <laughs> so it's like a learn effect. So it's also, there are some, some educational ransomware out there. So I have here also some ridiculous ransomware. So sometimes people are really crazy and thinking they need to make some really ridiculous ransomware. It's called Hitler ransomware. It is like, you see it's like, in, there's maybe, maybe see at the bottom I can 
go up there it's like a installer package and if you start it it will say okay yeah and then it just starts here and in this thing is first of all it's it's misspelled the, the even the the ransom it's not ransomware it's ransomware and this one they don't want bitcoins they it's it's ridiculous they want um vodafone um, cards for your mobile phone they want 25 euros vodafone card for your mobile phone and it's not even properly working it's like somehow it's deactivating your explorer so so they delete it, so uh, task manager is not working, so they deactivate the task manager and I think it really breaks your system when you reboot uh, the computer. So it's also really, really bad implemented. Um, then I have their um, jigsaw, maybe you know jigsaw out of saw. This and uh, there is the Jigsaw ransomware, which has a countdown and a blackmailing message, and it's also threatening, threatening people and with the countdown. So let's see, that's Jigsaw. So, like I told you, that's like the whole uh, file. It's I can't make it. Ah. So I'm, I'm so uh, so you see here jigsaw.pdf.exe and if I if I um, delete uh, if I turn off the the file extensions that it shows everything so so that's off so now yeah okay. Now it just looks like jigsaw.pdf and if it left the, 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 the real PDF icon there, it's, that's not, not, not hard to put there. So people really think it's a legit uh, PDF file. And when I started, well, in this, in this case, the user access control starts of window, Windows, but the other, there are other uh, ransomware which just starts and there is no, not, not even a user access control message. So in this way, I think, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a legit PDF, I will open it. And now that's quite funny, because it's running now. And so the first funding is, ah, now there is another thing, they, it wants to open a dropbox.exe file. Okay, I really want the Dropbox installation, let's do it. And then there's this ridiculous um, message. So it says like, uh, thank you. Uh, and yeah, it has uh, a red cross with, okay, they thank me for red cross and they say, congratulations. My stuff is registered. And there's a confirmation code and uh, I should email this code to them to activate the software. It can take up to 48 hours, but there is no email address where I should send it. Okay, uh, so now the, the other fuck up is uh, if you check out the Windows Explorer, there is the Dropbox.exe file, but if you see at the label, it stands Firefox. And the thing is, uh, they renamed the, the exe file uh, after the, the whole execution. And if you reboot the PC, it will be as a Firefox.exe and have then the, 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 the right name. So this will be renamed in Firefox.exe. But it's quite fun to see it's a Dropbox.exe file, but it's in the description is Firefox. So it's, you see it's quite a lot of CPU, CPU time used, so like 99%. Seems like a legit Dropbox installation. Uh, let's see, is my web wallpaper still there? Okay, yeah, still there, so it needs some time. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, now you see the whole, everything is encrypted. So it's, it's going quite fast, even if it's on my, on my virtual machine. So everything is with a .fun file now. 
surf.fun extensions. So they have a lot of different extensions for your ransomware. So they are like dot fun, dot ransomware, dot fuck, dot something. So they have really fun extension names for the ransomware. Or they put the whole email address into the file name where you have to email them. And like I said, yeah, now is the message here. So hi. You see already it's some uh, Visual Basic application with the Visual Basic logo here. So you can see, uh, yeah, here. Uh, so it's quite shitty done. So yeah, you, I have to pay, oh, so I have to pay within 24 hours $150 in Bitcoins to get the decryption key. Um, it often happens that the ransomware uh, developers have really uh, some service. So they have like some support chat where people can ask questions or ask how to get bitcoins. And so there's usually even some, uh, at some ransomware there's even some live support chat where people can really ask things about the, the key or the, the, the payment. And I heard of one case in, I think in America that some um, hair cutting studio got infected and they, they, em they wrote them or they, they even called them. There was even, a, I think, a phone service. And they told them, yeah, they, they can't pay the whole ransom. Can we do there? And so they tell yeah, pay us just the half of the ransom and we will we'll encrypt, decrypt your files. So you can even uh, argue with the people and they will give you some discount on the ransom. Um, so, um, so it says also that um, in so that's like old um, old thing. So it tells that 150 American dollars worth are 0.4 bitcoins. Um, then there is here a, a cow. Oh, let's see. So there is here a counter for one hour and then there will be one file deleted and this ransom has also a service it tells you which files are encrypted so there is a list of files and it tells you which path which file and if it's deleted so it's really a, uh, a service that you can know what you what you have to get out of a backup um, yeah, uh, then, well, I'm, I'm a person now, so, oh my god, uh, and after 72 hours, all the files have been deleted. And I think, oh no, fuck, I, I will shut down my PC, okay, hmm. So, and then, there is coming this message, you're about to make a very bad decision, are you sure about it? So... But there's only one button. Hmm? <laughs> there is just the OK button, and I mean, OK, I don't mind, I will shut down. Yeah, so I, I will shut down and so I'm shutting it down. And so the next day I think, well, next day Probably all my files are still there and I can re rescue something, so I will just boot up my system. Everything is fine again, I think. Let's power it on again. So Windows is starting and I'm quite motivated and I think that my files are okay now. So now, now it's starting, there wants to start to Firefox.exe in some roaming folder in frfx.frfx folder. I say, okay, I anyway want to start my Firefox, so okay. Uh, so, now you will see here. So as I said, it's in the, in the roaming folder, in the fire frfx folder of Firefox executable. Let's see. Yeah, the bit, the best thing is if you get, if you check out the, um, the stuff about the file. So, um, Firefox file, 
details. Um, so description is Firefox, it's application, it's this file version, pr product name Firefox, copyright Firefox and Mozilla, okay, seems legit, 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 and then original file name bitcoinblackmailer.exe. Uh, yeah, so uh, it will now just start uh, the screen again of the, the jigsaw screen and uh, yeah, will now tell me that he deleted some files. So just give it a second. It's still working now. And yeah, that's that's like the normal way how ransomware is operating. Um, before WannaCry, with WannaCry they used the Petya method that they encrypted the file description table and changed the master boot recorder. That's that's much faster because you just need to encrypt on one single file. So. So, uh, okay, this time it deleted anything, de didn't delete anything, interesting. Normally it deletes some files, so, okay, I had this time luck, so I was really had a, a lucky day when booting my system. But normally it deletes some files also, and it showed here deleted. Okay, well. Um, Actually, something changed. It now says 24 hours. It says every 24 hours, but it says in 72 hours all the files are deleted. But, well, okay, uh, it's, it's a virtual machine, so it can really easily revert to the, my clean state. That's not so easy possible in Windows normally. Um, normally you, you restore a backup or an image and it takes much longer. So you see a, a virtual machine is quite handy. And now I'll show you the, the type of ransomware which, which used for WannaCry. It was, I have there a Petya sample. And here you see, um, so here you see when they really uh, put the, the icon. So they put the PDF icon here. And you see it in the, on the so there's a PDF icon, but it's, it's an exe file. So again, if I uh, put away the common file names, it will stand here um, the rectum.pds. And so I see, oh yeah, it's for sure a legit file. So I will just open it. Yeah, it's for sure a PDF, let's start. And so this time, it will really take not a lot of time. And it will just reboot or just turn off. So it needs quite a lot of time. So 100% and then it will just, it just turned off. Normally it should reboot, but okay. So I will just start it now. And then, now here is, uh, that's a fake check disk uh, thing. So it's not the real check disk because it's, it's really fast. So it's not a legit check disk. And in, in this phase, it really encrypts the master boot recorder and overrides the, encrypts the file system table and or overrides the master boot recorder. So that's, that's, that's really, really fast for a check disk, totally legit. Yeah, so it's nearly finished. And yeah, my PC is repaired. Okay, cool. Oh, nope. Uh, so that's, that's the screen of the Petya and I press any key. And yeah, that's the, the interface. So they tell you now this time they have an uh, onion address. So you have an onion address here and that's your personal description code there. And yeah, please pay us. Oh, there's all the data you need to know. Um, there are different Petya versions. There is this, this red one, this, this, that's already decrypted. So they, 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 they know how they encrypted the stuff. There is a, with some brute force. And, and they made some mistakes at the, at the crypto implementation. And 
it uses some bytes on the hard disk of, of some soft sectors on the hard disk to, for the encryption and they reverse engineered the application and found some bugs in the in the crypto implementation and they uh, released a decryptor for this kind of ransomware. There is a green version with, the, with the, which they also somehow uh, managed to decrypt but there you have to brute force and you will really need to take like two days with some GTX, GTX uh, GeForce, GTX uh, graphic cards to brute force it. And there is the WannaCry one, the new one, uh, I didn't uh, check this out, but it's also some, it's quite the same mechanism. So I think, well, okay, I will just restart my, sh my machine, probably it will work again. So I, I just reset my machine. Oh, not pause, I want to reset. And yes, so, and, so it will still boot there. So it's, the, the whole master boot record has changed and will boot every time in this screen. Yeah, so that was the better ransomware. There are a lot of other ransomwares which have di different uh, screens and different um, ways of encrypting. So that was a small, uh, small demo of what I have here. Um, yes, so let's shut it down. Or uh, let's put in my clean state back. Um, so, ah. so, do you have some questions? I'm nearly at the end of my presentation, so if you have some questions, I'm glad to ask to uh, answer. And yeah, uh, my question would be that. Uh, Every ransomware that uh, you mentioned in this uh, presentation was Windows based. Yes, uh, so my, uh, this talk especially is uh, focused on Windows. There are also ransomware for other operating systems. It's not so common, but there was the, this BitTorrent client uh, transmission, I think, which was some ransomware integrated in one update. Uh, there is also ransomware for Linux. There, especially there was one ransomware malware which attacked web servers with vulnerabilities. So it exploited some, some um, I think content management system vulnerability and then, ex then encrypted the whole uh, var VVV folder. So, but the thing is that Windows is like the, the most used operating system of normal users. And so it's like the most valuable system to attack because like there are a lot of users and a lot of people will click this file and open it. And therefore for the malware, vehicle, it's, malware developer it's like not um, viable to, valuable to like uh, develop other platforms. But there's for sure some, but normally if you use Linux you're normally uh, some uh, experienced user and you will probably check out if you're opening files with, as, with root commands and all this stuff. But yeah, there are all other operating systems, ransomware or malware. But Windows is like this platform to implement ransomware or malware in general. Some other questions? Else, if you like, uh, I can give you samples of mine. There is a GitHub repo with some malware samples, not only ransomware, also other samples. It's called the zoo on GitHub, if you're interested in it. And else, if you have some other questions or want to see something specific, just ask me. I'm here in the camp. Uh, just come by and would like to talk with you or exchange. Or if, so if you have some samples, we can exchange. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>